Did a dangerous gang strike again? It is a Dominican gang the NYPD has been watching and fighting for years. In the heat wave of June 2018, teenage machete gangs ran riot on the streets of New York City. After eight stabbings and two shootings in just 14 days in the Bronx, some in broad daylight, the summer of violence reached its crescendo with the brutal murder of 15-year-old Lissandro Guzman Feliz. It took at least 10 seconds to pull Junior away from the back counter, the panicked teen knocking over a potato chip stand as he struggled to stay inside. CCTV and smartphone footage of the attack quickly went viral. New York was rattled. Gang violence had always been present, but rarely so pervasive. Social media meant the murder rang through the digital street as well as the real one. Trinitario. This idea of the digital street is essentially a traditional street life transformed into the new neighborhood, the new community in which people are also living as well, which is social media. The perpetrators of this attack? A youth set of the Trinitarios, New York's brutal Dominican street gang that happened to be at war with each other. This is a group that has a, a propensity to use weapons and, and to be very violent to them. That's their feather and their cap. That's sort of their trademark. They not only killed this kid, but they brutally killed him. We are alarmed by the use of social media to really over-proliferate this violence in our communities. This is the business of crime. And in this episode, we're exploring how social media has completely transformed the way gangs operate and turned a new generation of teenage Trinitarios against each other. Lissandro Guzman Feliz, or Junior as he was known, was no gang member. He dreamed of becoming an NYPD detective since the age of five and was even enrolled in a trainee police program. Now his face stares down from murals painted on walls across his old neighborhood in the Bronx. So how did he end up dead? Junior's 15 accused killers introduced to the public, captured on surveillance, bolting into the bodega, demanding the release of the terrified Junior from behind the store counter. Junior was just categorized as being somebody who has been seen in these communities, hanging out with some of these kids that are involved in this lifestyle. Unfortunately, mistaken identity ended a promise in life. The CCTV and smartphone video footage is hard to watch. Junior tries to hide behind the counter of a local bodega, but the owner doesn't realize what's going on till it's too late. The gang drag Junior from the store and repeatedly stab him on the pavement. The gang has come a long way from where they started. After being established by two Dominican prisoners in the early 90s, the Trinitarios quickly forged a rep for street-level brutality. The FBI say that they are the most rapidly expanding Caribbean gang in America. In 2009, the NYPD launched a huge clampdown on the activity of the Trinitarios. A lot of the old guard is no longer, um, whether they are in prison or dead. By the time Junior was murdered in 2018, most of the gang's top brass were in prison. A leadership vacuum emerged as a result and rival sets within the gang had begun warring amongst themselves. Those found guilty of murdering Junior came from one of the many subsets that were attempting to gain control, Los Chures. Gangs like the ring bells, as we say, gangs like to let people know that they are a violent group that is not afraid to use weapons, not afraid to use machetes, not afraid to take it to the, the extreme to make their point and to have other people respect them and know that they're around. This surveillance video shows those innocent people running for cover. They are caught in the middle of a gang war. Many of the defendants regularly posted social media photographs. This is the same gang responsible for the 2018 killing of Alessandro Jr. Guzman Feliz. Many believe this rampant infighting was inflamed by social media. The way in which we understand gangs today uh, is no longer. These large hierarchical structures have been disrupted. And so what we see today are younger individuals that are really embedded in crews and cliques that are very much neighborhood and block based. And these are also young people who spend an enormous amount of time on social media. The videos show young men in masks dancing on fire escapes, stoops, and dimly lit back streets to drill music. Flanked by friends in gang colors, they show off cash and mime shooting guns down the lens of a smartphone. We're seeing people who are looking for connection. We're seeing people that are looking for community. Couple that with this idea that you can find community, you can feel 
like a human being because if you can engage and have lots of followers and can promote music and promote your art, that that can make you feel better. You can have a better experience. These posts mythologize the gang lifestyle as one that can bring status, wealth, girls, and excitement. The comments overflow with lime green gun and heart emojis, which match the colors the Trinitarios have worn for decades. The internet has meant the whole landscape has changed. It's astronomical. I mean, just the recruitment, you know, just the, the flamboyancy of these groups, the way they make it look sexy to, to younger individuals. So it's being used in recruitment. It's being used in intimidation. The game is viral. The game is to a point where you can be in one state disrespecting another group in another state. Um, you could be in one country disrespecting a group in another country. So just the vast, you know, way that you can get things out there to the masses these days in social media, gangs have embraced that. And the new generation of street gangs have increasingly used social media to humiliate their sworn enemies. The NYPD say Junior may have been targeted because he was wrongly identified as a guy who appeared in one of these videos, rapping into a smartphone camera in the foreground. Using social media as a weapon isn't unique to New York. Organized crime elsewhere uses similar tactics to recruit, target and punish. The Italian Camorra, one of the deadliest organizations in the world, uses the internet to recruit and use children as part of new gangs that have changed the face of their criminal operation. Diciamo di mostrare la propria fortezza, perché quando uno ci vede per strada ci devono temere. I social media possono essere molto importanti per la crescita del ragazzo Experts say social media is breeding a kind of envy that pushes people to join street gangs. It's becoming an epidemic, to be honest with you. And I'll meet with the gang members and I ask them, you know, how did this come about? You know, nine out of ten times they say it was a social media platform that was used to disrespect us or we disrespected them. And, you know, it all happened with the use of these phones. In the end, though, it's a double-edged sword. The very tool that these gangs are using is allowing police to track their movements. More and more turf wars, infighting and factional disputes starting online and bleeding onto the streets are allowing cops to put more gang members in jail. If you YouTube some of their videos, you can see that they call people out directly. There's a saying the streets will never forget. But if that's true, the internet has an even longer memory because the things you post have a habit of sticking around. Fleeting moments of bravado may lead to spending far longer behind bars.